Hey guys, Dylan Thompson, Chase Motorsports, coach and trailer sales, Paducah, Kentucky. Check us out online at race-haulers.com, on Facebook under Chase Motorsports, coach and trailer sales. Bringing to you a 2020 Renegade XL45 quad slide 600 horse DD16 Detroit with the six speed Allison transmission. This truck's got 29,200 miles. Um, it's uh, been very, very well taken care of. So I'm gonna take you around it. And um, if you're the one that ends up purchasing this coach from us, I'm gonna show you a little uh, bit about it and a few things you need to know. So um, we'll start by going around the outside and then we'll work our way inside. Um, a lot of people ask us, what are these for? So this is a Mendix system. It's a collision mitigation is what they call it. Basically, if you were turning right and a car is sitting next to you on the interstate, it's gonna buzz inside and let you know that you're fixing to probably hit somebody. So to me, it's a little annoying, but to most people that drive them, they get used to them. Um, it is something you can to take to a Freightliner dealer and get turned off, but there again, if it's off and it doesn't work, then you know, and you hit someone, you'll wish you had it. So uh, that's what that's for. Um, this coach, the windows are tinted on it, so you can see they're a little darker than when they come out of the factory. Um, so going around the storage compartments, this guy here is pretty much a storage. Um, a little later on the video, I'm gonna show you what's in that black box. It does go to the uh, sewer system. Uh, it's a pump that grinds up the sewage and makes it pretty much run out of a hose the size of a, a garden hose. So under here, you've got storage. Um, in the little black bag is actually a generator-like exhaust kit that basically vents the generator exhaust up and kind of over the top of the coach, if that makes sense. So there's been people in the past that have said the fumes with the wind blowing the right direction would go under the coach and come in. So they got smart. They invented a little exhaust tip kit that basically raises the exhaust up and gets it hot, heat rises. So the further you can get it up and out of your way, the less you'll smell it. So that's sitting under there. That is something that was ordered with this coach. Um, You've also got your inverter. So basically what this big white box does is it takes um, your 12 volt battery bank and turns it into 120, which is gonna run your TVs. If your generator's not on, um, it's gonna run your refrigerator and quite a few of the outlets inside the coach. Um, so this thing, uh, this coach has a huge battery bank on it. Um, you've got multiple batteries linked together to make the amp hour really high. And uh, that's what feeds that. And then also recharges those batteries. So if your generator's running or you're plugged into shore power, this uh, white box is also gonna take 120 volts from your generator or shore power cord and charge up your batteries. So um, another thing I'll mention to go along with the electrical while we're on that is this coach does have the um, solar panels. So uh, if you're out in the sun or you got some decent light, you're going to recharge the batteries through that as well. So we'll go on down to the next compartment. Uh, this guy here is going to be your aqua hot. And uh, basically how aqua hot works, it's got a, an electric side to it. So if you were on shore power or again generator running, you could run the electric side of the aqua hot and it's going to heat water for a shower, um, for your sink, for your kitchen. Uh, it's going to heat up the water. Um, the aqua hot also, the cool part about them is they run off of a diesel fuel. So basically you've got a burner that ignites and uh, the, the diesel comes in from the same tanks that your truck runs on and it burns the diesel, um, burns a flame through a coil, makes the water run through a coil. Essentially, if you've got diesel and you've got fresh water or access to water, you'll never run out of hot water. Uh, they don't pull much fuel. Um, and then it has engine preheat, so you can actually use the, um, the hot water from the engine to run through. It's tied into the antifreeze system and heat your water up that way. So there's like three different ways to heat. I prefer the diesel, fire, or the electric. If you're running your um, your generator or you're plugged into shore power at a campground, you could also do both. Um, some people will turn the electric on and the diesel on. Um, in this jug, you always wanna make sure that this jug um, is at least when it's cold, is on the cold line. I went ahead and included the rest of uh, probably a half gallon or more of the stuff, it's called boiler antifreeze. It is a little bit different than car antifreeze. It's something that you do wanna check probably once a week. You know, it's, you can come over here and kind of rub that. And these these tanks do stain a little over time, so kind of punch it and you'll see um, the uh, level floating around there. Other than that, there is a diesel fuel filter under there. I recommend at least once a year changing that and cleaning the burner tip. Uh, we just done that to this coach. It's got five minutes on the uh, new fuel filter and cleaning the tip. So all that is 
8 plus. And I do think there's some con controls over here to the left that you can actually turn the heat up and down. So uh, if it's not hot enough for you, you can go down here and twist the knob and you can make the water, um, make the coils hotter either on the electric side or the diesel side. Um, moving on over, we'll go to this guy here. So this is an outdoor entertainment. Uh, the remotes are in here, one's for the TV, one's for the Samsung soundbar. Um, I'm pretty sure the way this works is whatever you're watching in here on Direct TV is what you'll be watching here. They're linked together. Uh, but you can also, it's a smart TV, you can link your phone to it or play Netflix or stuff like that. Soundbar and TV. Uh, this coach was ordered with the bigger TV. I think it's a 43 inch. Sometimes they put the smaller ones, but this one does have the upgrade. So when you're done, uh, just pull this down. Uh, make sure the little latch is up like that. Give it a firm press, close, and then you can also lock it if you want. Uh, if you're staying somewhere and worried about somebody messing with your stuff, it is locked. Uh, moving on to this compartment here. Uh, this has got an electric cooler slash freezer in it. So you can actually adjust the temp. Uh, you can set it anywhere from, I think, 20 degrees up to 35 degrees. Right now it's set on about 30, so it'd be perfect to put some drinks in. Best part, you don't have to ice them down. I mean, this once this gets cold, it's like a freezer, refrigerator in your house. You know, you can put drinks, meat, whatever in it, and it's not going to hurt it. Uh, you pull these two levers here, and this basically pops out. Um, you pull up here, kind of pull back on both sides, and there you go. It is on and running now, letting it get cold. So. Um, there is leveling pads included with this coach. So what these are is a big, thick, rubber, heavy-duty pad. Uh, I think it's made out of recycled tires or something, but um, basically when you go to level, a lot of places, if you got concrete or something, um, you're gonna be fine. But if you're in a gravel area or somewhere, maybe on some fresh asphalt, this will help keep it. You gotta realize you're lifting you know, 40 or 50,000 pounds up. So when those levelers go down, there's four on the coach. When they go down, it's a lot of pressure on whatever's underneath it. So I always recommend using these guys. Um, there's four included, two in this side and two on the other side. Always make sure too, when you close these, um, kind of give them a firm, kind of a palm there and a knee, and you'll, make, you'll hear them actually click one more time and that's when the door is fully shut. Um, We'll move on down to this. Um, this is just storage, so you can see you've got a place to uh, put luggage, lawn chairs, whatever. Um, you also have up under here um, is part of the electronic system uh, where you can service if you have an issue. Again, when I shut that, give it a firm push. And here you have the other hitch that goes to the rear. So right now the hitch in it's a two and five sixteenths ball. But if you said, hey, I, I want to run a two inch ball or I want to run a different style hitch, you have a receiver that you can remove the one out of the coach, slide that one in, and basically I think it's a two and a half inch receiver, which is the heavier grade. Also up in there is the Mighty Vac system, which is pretty much like an onboard um, central vac, they call it. Uh, the outlet I'm pretty sure is under the bed. We'll check when we go inside, but this is where you would clean it, like where the bag would be. Um, for the, the dirt that you're pulling up. Uh, we're going down to the trailer. One thing I noticed on the trailer, it does have an electric tongue jack and the light, which is nice for unhooking during the dark or, um, or essentially unhooking. A lot of them just have the regular old hand crank. This one does have the electric. And somebody was super smart, so they wired an electrical panel, which is feeding this little battery, a uh, solar panel, rather, uh, that's keeping the little battery charged. So uh, if you have a battery maintainer, you can always charge it here or go on the inside and charge it, but that is super cool in my opinion. Um, the trailer's wrap matches the coach uh, really well. Um, and here you've got a um, diamond plate little step uh, to get up into the trailer. Um, basically, just aluminum storage cabinets. Um, your battery is also under here. So you've got um, more storage up here for straps and um, the, and the owner's manual, there's, you know, it's a trailer, there's not much of a manual included, but what they do send with them is in these two little bags. And we went ahead and included some D-ring, uh, or excuse me, E-track clips. So you can turn around here and see that um, we've actually got the spare tire and wheel and some race ramps um, all uh, included. So those make loading a, a low profile car much easier using the race ramps. Um, also, we went ahead and threw in the shore power cord. This plugs into the front of the trailer, of which you've got enough cord that you can go down and plug into the outlet inside of the truck. 
All you would be powering up is um, the onboard charger, which is recharging the battery, and you're gonna power up the outlets um, down here on the floor. There's a couple outlets throughout the trailer. All the lighting is LED, so you've got a switch here, which turns your countertop light on. Then right here, you've got one switch does the outside LED lights, the other switch does the roof lights, and the other switch does the lights like for loading a car down here on the wall. So um, that's where you control all that at. Um, it's already got a few Pit Pal products, a uh, place to hang some ratchet straps. We thought that was a nice place for the, the cord. And um, so let's go to your lift. Um, how you run it is this controller right here. Basically, it's real simple. You turn the lift on, you've got up and down. Okay, so to let the lift go down, you have to raise the lift up, pull the lever, and which is a safety, and that will let the lift fall down. If you try to go down, but you haven't raised it up a little and pulled the safety, it's just gonna sit there. Essentially, the reason they design it like that is if the hydraulics ever blew, uh, your car on the bottom wouldn't get smushed by your car on the top. So um, they think these things out and any safety measure that they can include, they do for, for themselves and for the person operating it. So uh, we'll roll on around the outside of the trailer. Again, the steps are included, so we're gonna just set those inside. Um, you got a couple outlets out here. Um, Triaxle, aluminum wheels, tires are in good shape on it. Uh, it's got the, uh, the drop down door on the back. Um, so when you get ready to fold the door up, of course, this flap, um, you would fold it up first like this. And then you wanna make sure to raise this flap up and then raise the door. The door is spring loaded. So typically one person uh, can get on the back of it and uh, simply just grab and lift it. I mean, I'm actually having to hold the door from going up. So it pretty much takes care of itself. And once you get the door up like this, all you do is roll that around. You can get you a couple padlocks if you want um, to lock the, the trailer up safely. And uh, we'll continue on around the other side again. Not much going on over here. Uh, just the, uh, the uh, decals. You can see the back, how it's all good stuff. We do have the 2 and 5 16 ball on, which fits this trailer. Uh, we'll start with the storage compartments back here. Uh, this one's going to be where your store power room is at. So if you're at a place that offers power, uh, obviously there's no sense in running the generator and burning up your diesel fuel. So you can stretch this cord out. You actually want to pull it out and then go through the little hole that's in the bottom. That way, if it runs through the hole, you can shut your door with the, the uh, reel or the cord still out uh, through the bottom. I also included this adapter. What this little guy is handy, is handy for is if you were storing the coach um, and you didn't have a 50 amp outlet handy, most everyone has access to a extension cord or a 110 outlet. So you can plug this into here, plug this into your outlet. Now, you're not going to run roof airs and um, you know, you're know you not going to run the whole coach, but this will keep everything charged and it will run the refrigerator. So if you want to plug it in and at least uh, keep the fridge cold without using the, uh, the inverter that's using battery power and running it through, plug this little guy into the shore power reel, plug this in into an extension cord or outlet and you'll keep your batteries charged up and also um, keep your fridge cold. This is the transfer switch, so it is automatic. Uh, it will choose generator power or shore power. Um, so if you wanted to, if you got home one afternoon and wanted to plug into shore power while the generator is running, plug in, shut your gener generator off, and this little guy here has got a brain in it, and it will it will take off or it'll uh, start using the shore power versus the generator because the generator is off at that point. There is a, a button in here for the reel, so when you're ready to retract, all you have to do is press this, and he pulls the cord up in there. Uh, next is the generator. Um, here at Chase Motorsports, anytime we get a coach in, we do service the generator by changing the engine oil, the oil filter, the air filter, and the fuel filter. So that's all been done. Uh, you'll see our neat little uh, sticker there. It's got a date and the hours that it was done and the hours that we recommend doing it again. Folks, maintenance on this stuff is key. Um, you know, I recommend uh, usually every couple hundred hours. So this one was done at 1175, so 1375. Engine oil, oil filter, air filter, maybe every two or three oil changes, unless you were like in a real dusty environment. But typically, you could go probably three or 400 hours on an air filter. So every two or three oil changes is fine on the air filter. 
uh, again, unless you're in a real uh, dusty environment. But 12.5 ohm in diesel, uh, it's running off of the truck tank, so uh, you, uh, you don't have to really worry about it. It does have a breaker, so if you ever fire the generator up and you're like, man, I know it's running, but we're still not getting voltage in the coach. There is a little breaker up here. Make sure it's flipped up. Make sure it hasn't tripped, so that's one of the, the key things that transfers the power into the transfer switch, which then goes to your panel inside. Um, over here is your plumbing area. So let's uh, let Mr. Jim kind of zoom in here. Um, basically, you've got your um, your tank fill, which is this hose here, and this is also on a reel. So this would be like what they call city water which if you were at a campground or at your house and you didn't want to use the water in your tank in the coach, you can tie into this with the valve like this, and that is going to be called city water. So basically you turn the faucet on at your house, it powers up or it pressures this hose with this valve up, it's going to uh, put water into your hot water heater, um, aqua hot system, it's gonna put water throughout every faucet in the coach. But if you want to fill the tank inside, you basically just roll the lever down. You take this, again, connect it to your faucet at your house and turn the faucet on and you will hear the tanks filling. Now, when the tanks get full, a lot of times people go, well, how do I know it's full? Well, you can look at the gauge, A, or B, it does have a vent on the top. If you see water running out a decent stream, chances are your tanks are full. I think this one holds around 150 gallons of fresh water. Um, so it does take a minute to, to fill. Um, over here you got uh, cables, so if you were at, um, again, at a campground or an RV park or at your house and you wanted to just tie into your basic cable, you can tie into that and it's going to provide cable to the TVs. Uh, up here is black tank wash, so everyone knows the, the kind of the, one of the downsides of RVing is your waste tanks and it, it doesn't have to be, a lot of people make a bigger deal out of it than what it is. Um, basically, when you when you dump your black tank, you can hook your garden hose from a faucet to this, and you can flush the tank out. So it's going to get leftover toilet paper and stuff that's in the black tank. It's going to help flush that out. Helps keep the stench down essentially, and just keeps it clean. Um, you've got your gray tank and your black tank dumps. So those are on cables. Always dump your black tank first. Um, once you've dumped the black tank, then pull your gray tank. Black tank is strictly toilet, okay? Gray tank is shower, sink, um, vanity in the bathroom. That's the gray tank. So after you dump your black, you dump your gray, and essentially that cleans out your gray hose, uh, or that your that cleans the black stuff out of your uh, hose. It, it kind of just helps clean it up there. And that way you don't have as much to, to worry with later. So hose reel retracts. So you see how I kind of pulled the reel out? All you have to do is press the button, and you'll see it sucks him up in there. Um, I'm going to, um, here in a second, we'll keep going down through these and then I'm going to get the macerator pump, which essentially, uh, if we were dumping the sewage, we would hook up and I'm going to demonstrate it that shows how to grind it up and run it out like a one inch hose. Um, this is what the cord is here for, so this will go to our macerator pump and I'll show you guys that. Um, you do have what's called a spray away and basically it's like a little pressurized garden hose. So super cool setup there just to help clean stuff up. Um, low point drain, so if you were winterizing the coach or if you said, you know what, um, this coach has been setting for a while and um, I'd really like to just kind of freshen the water up in it, you could drain, that's called a low point drain. You do have a water spigot, uh, which um, we will use here in a minute when we do the macerator pump, but that's also just, you want to fill the dog bowl up with water or whatever, you've got a, a place to do that. So we'll move on to this one here. Um, this guy is going to be where we will tie our macerator pump into um, that. So we're going to remove the cap um, and we'll tie a hose to it. The little pump will sit on the ground. So we'll move on over and I'll, I'll show you that here in just a moment. Um, let's touch on something here. we got two exhaust tips. That's going to be the, the big one's the exhaust for the truck engine. Um, the little one is for your aqua hot system. So when you turn the aqua hot on uh, diesel mode and it's burning diesel, going to be able to put your hand down there and you're going to feel hot air coming out. That's just diesel fuel burning. It's kind of like a small version of your truck engine. So uh, that's what you'll feel. Uh, moving on over again, 
Uh, this is uh, just where your lines are ran. That's where your black and gray tank are up under there. So not really useful for anything, honestly. I think the door is mainly here. If you had to service something, you could easily access it. Um, on down to the next one. Uh, we've got storage. So um, one thing I like that Renegade implemented as an option a few years ago is Rhino line storages. Um, and I think most of you would agree with me that have been in the RVing or toter home world at some point. The carpet, great until it gets stained and dirty or oil or chemical spill on it. The Rhino line, awesome. You can go in with some basic degreaser or cleaner and uh, they don't do it white so it doesn't stain. They don't do it black so it doesn't look dirty. They do it gray. I love it. I would never own a coach or order a coach new without that option. It's not real expensive uh, to do and it's to me A plus on that. So uh, moving on over to the next one is going to be our battery banks. Um, so the batteries on the lower part are what we call the house batteries. That's what's running the coach side. The ones on top are for your truck engine. So if you ever get out there and your truck engine won't start, it's the ones on top. If it's the, the let's say you've accidentally left the coach for four months and you didn't plug it in and you forgot to heal the or hit the uh, kill switch which I'll show you here in a minute these would be dead on the bottom so you do want to check the water levels um, the only way to get out of that is to install gel batteries it's probably fifteen hundred or two thousand dollars at your local Napa Auto Parts but they do make gel batteries that size that are maintenance free um, uh, the batteries that are in this coach is typically what people put in them um, and uh, you do have to check it's like a big boat battery you want to take a little um, bottle of distilled water with a hose you can take the caps off when they're full put the caps back on but if you use the coach a lot and you don't ever check that and the batteries run dry I had a customer call me last week with uh, some major issues inside the coach he said the lights are flickering and it it just seems like the 12 volt side is like it has a mind of its own. And I said, well, how long has it been since you've checked the battery water levels? He said, heck, I've never checked them. Well, he's owned the coach for a year. Sure enough, they were dry. And I told him, I said, before you go on a long trip again, I would probably replace them. If you get, if they get that low um, and you, you haven't checked them, you probably burn them up. But these are good. We've checked the levels. Uh, that goes along with our, um, our pre-owned sales. You know, we tried to go the extra mile and, uh, and kind of, look at the coach as if it was ours and, and make sure it's ready so um, on over here um, our old buddy Mr. Def Flood. so me and Mr. Def Flood are not friends but it's part of the uh, emissions clean burn whatever they want to call it here in the US so this right here is your Def Flood. so you want to make sure you keep him full you don't ever want to get down to where it's blinking a light because it will I promise you it will put this thing into a lip mode you have to have a freight liner to either plug in and reset it, and it's just a big mess. So at least don't let him get down past a quarter tank. It's full right now. We just filled it up. Over here is your diesel. It's going to hold 120 gallons um, of just regular diesel fuel that you can get at any truck stop. So this is just magnetic. You just kind of pull on it, and there's two magnets on each side, and that's what's under there. Um, I don't really think there's a need to pop the hood. I mean, underneath, you've got a DD-16 Detroit. Um, of course, these trucks don't really burn any oil, but you do want to check the oil maybe once, you know, every big trip or something. If you ever had a leak and, and caught it, it would be way cheaper than not making the effort of checking it. Um, we did just check it, and uh, the oil is perfect. Uh, we also changed the oil. So, again, kind of like on our generator, if you go in the coach or in the cab here, and you look up to the left, you're going to see the little white and black Chase Motorsports decal. It's going to show you the date we done it, the mileage, and then the suggested mileage. Most people say 12 to 15,000 miles is what you can put on, on the uh, oil change. Some people do it at 10, but 12 to 15 is kind of the industry standard. So, um, this coach also has the side view camera. So, when you throw your blinker on left turn you're going to see on the little GPS screen a camera view of this side of the coach likewise with the right side you go right blinker it's gonna pop up again it's trying to save you these guys are big uh, it's trying to save you from running over someone so uh, the lighting on the front uh, is LED I had that question with a customer recently uh, this coach was ordered brand new with LED lighting so um, puts out kind of a bluish whitish light at night 
I think that's about it on the outside. Let's touch on that macerator. Let's do that and then we'll take off on the inside. So that storage, a little black uh, container with the yellow top is um, something that uh, goes along with that. So come on over here and um, I will show you what we've got going on with that. got it all nice and neat here. Uh, first step, you're going to want to take one of the orange hoses and we're going to go to the next bay down and we are going to connect to this guy. And be careful, you'll always have a little bit of water residue in these guys where the valves don't totally seal. So not much in that as you can see, but you'll always have a little bit. So connect this guy here and make sure he's on there tight. You'll see little notches it kind of pops into. And then um, we're gonna grab this guy. This is step two, is to grab the little pump. Some people leave all this just crammed up in there. I thought it looked a little neater in a toad. I mean, you could leave it sitting in there if you wanted to, but um, you don't have to use this. I personally never use them. We, if we're at a place where we can dump, it's an RV park, it goes way faster out that hose than it does this system. So. I personally use that, but if you were at your house and you didn't have a dump station or access to your sewage system or you're on city sewer, you kind of need this. You know, this is the only way to um, to go somewhere small uh, hose-wise. So you got that connected. Connect this one down here. Again, make sure that when you do connect this, you get it up in there tight. I'm not gonna spin it on there because it'll be really tight, but press that up. You want the tits down here if you're using it. Um, then you take this little cord that we showed you earlier, connect these two together. Okay, um, this is, the little white hose is the output. So it's sewer's gonna come in here. It's gonna be ground up by this little motor and it's gonna spit it out this little white hose. Now, step three. Also, I'm including a brand new box of gloves. I'm in a place where I can wash my hands when I'm done, but um, you can put gloves on if you want, and they're right here. There's also different fittings. Um, like I said, if you're at an RV park, I wouldn't mess with all this. I would just use the regular hose, but if you're not, this is the way to go. So uh, we're gonna take the green hose, and we're going to connect to water. To run this system, you are required to have water. It's it's so that if the pump gets low on the sewer, it's going to essentially just keep cleaning itself out water. So we got a quick connect. So hook that up. Make sure it's on. Okay. So make sure the valve is straight. Turn your water on here, and turn your. Uh, it's got an on. It says flow jet. So over here, turn that on. Hear it. So water on, flow jet on. Then pull your black valve first and essentially it's all gonna run through the hose, it's gonna go into this little guy, and it's gonna grind it up. It's gonna come out like a straight liquid. So, um, again, orange hose connected, pump out, connected to power, green leader hose from our spigot to this, and then turn it on, water on, turn the flow jet on, and, and then pull the valve. So pull the valve here, it's gonna come into here, your little pump's grinding it, it's gonna run out. Then when you're when you kind of notice you're not getting anything out of the hose, come over and pull the gray one. And then that's gonna again run it. It's gonna keep going, keep the water on, but the gray one is going to kind of flush the whole system out. So um, we'll move on inside the coach. I'll come back in a minute, button everything up. Um, common question, what's this for? This goes under here and takes off the fresh water filter. So these have kind of a, a very basic RO filtration system. The filter is brand new in here. I recommend keeping a, a box of them and putting a new one on every couple of months if you're using it a lot, but um, you take this to spin off the filter and it does have a brand new one in it. This little guy is for storing a sewer hose. Um, you can put one in there. I'm going to keep everything in our box here over on the other side, but that's what that's for. It's a tube that you can throw like an orange hose in. So uh, we'll move on into the inside. Um, and uh, show you the controls and stuff. We'll go around this way. 
what's that? Um, it does have keyless entry on it, so I know you hold the one down to lock it. You hold it. Um, I won't do it now because I don't know the code on the entry. We're going to help figure out how to reset that, but you can essentially lock and unlock the code from this, and it comes with uh, key fobs that are actually on the key ring. So. Okay, let's we'll start down here. Um, the uh, step comes out, and you can press the switch that's up here on your left. It's a little black switch. You press it, and basically what happens is when that switch is off, that doesn't go in and out. So it's really nice that if you're at a your RV park or wherever your destination is, it makes the steps not running in and out and, and just wears them out. So, But that switch will be over road if the ignition key on the truck's turned on. If it turns on, the steps will suck up in there because um, it doesn't want them left out, obviously going down the road and hitting something. So um, steps are out and uh, we're gonna come on up in. So I was telling you about that kill switch earlier and I'll have Mr. Jim kind of spin around here. Um, down here, there's a little red switch um, basically what that does is kills all the 12 volt on the coach. So if you were done for e the evening or the day or the week or whatever, shut the ACs off. I'll show you how to do that. Raise this little guy up and press that button. What that does is kills all the 12 volt. Um, so if you thought you left a light on in the bedroom, that it, it will kill it. So we're going to leave it on because we got the ACs and everything running. But come on up in here, Jim, and I'll show you a little bit about the interior. So, uh, we'll start with this panel here. Uh, this is um, a system that Renegade, again, developed a few years ago. I love. It's very um, simplex. It's very easy to use, uh, very user-friendly, if you want to call it. So, home screen. you got light master on and off. If you hit the off, you notice the lights go. Everything kills. Light master on. Everything comes on. Uh, it's all LED lighting, so never think, oh, I'm leaving the lights on. It's burning up a ton of electricity. These things are pulling millivolts. It's crazy how much light for very little electricity. Um, down here you've got your front, your mid, and your rear. So that's showing the current temp in here. Uh, currently it's about every bit of what would you say Jim, 90 degrees outside right now. It's hot and we're 73 on the front, we're 76 on the mid, and we're 73 in the bedroom. Um, down here you've got aqua hot electric uh, off. So you can press that, turns him on. Again over here, burner, on, off. Engine preheat, if you're running your motor, you could use that to preheat your water. On, off, okay? Um, over here, you've got water pump. That's on, that's off. On is red. Fresh water is 67%. Gray and black are both on zero. You have tank heaters, so if you live in a climate where it does get cold and you were using the coach during the winter, I would recommend turning the tank heaters on. And we're talking about like 30 and below. We're not talking about if it's seven or 50 outside. They're not going to freeze, you know, just kind of use common sense with that, but tank heaters, so you turn that on and it essentially heats up like your um, your fresh and your um, your black and gray tanks. Um, over here, uh, battery voltage. House voltage is currently 13, and with everything running, that's pretty good. We've got a lot of stuff on inside right now. Chassis is 12.9. Again, the only time you would really see the chassis drop is if we went up and started the coach. It's going to drop for a second and then uh, while the coach is running, it's going to use the alternator to recharge it. Um, AGS, that's something you'll probably want to read up a little bit, but I can give you like the, the 30 second spiel. It's basically called automatic generator start. When the batteries get down to a certain voltage, you can have it kick on. Uh, for instance, you, you want to run everything off batteries throughout the night because you don't want to hear the generator run, but you're worried that you don't want to wake up and have dead batteries. So you can turn on AGS, automatic generator start. You can set it, you can program it. You can say, when my batteries get down to 11 and a half volts, I want the generator to come on, which essentially through the converter, it's converting 120 to 12, it's going to recharge your batteries for you. So um, the generator running, 1176 on the hours. To start it, you hold the start button down. It'll line up red and you will actually hear um, some clicking, a clicking noise. Uh, for a few minutes, and um, then to stop the generator, just hit the stop button. Uh, over here, you've got your lighting. So you've got light master on and off, front master. You can take and turn these up and down. You can dim them. You can turn all the lights on and then go through here, and you can watch I'm hitting sofa, and over this side, you can see it turning the sofa lights on and off. 
uh, kitchen overhead, um, the sconce lighting, which is like these guys here. Um, we'll go on down. Next one um, is going to show our power source. It says generator. If we were plugged into shore power, it would say shore power on it. Um, generator start stop. Um, AGS, again, it's part of that uh, automatic generator start. You can access that from down here or where the lightning bolt is, you can do it there. Um, you've got, again, your batteries. This is kind of a, uh, just another repeat of what we looked at a second ago. Uh, temp, so front, uh, to turn it on cool, you essentially would light this up cool. So I'm gonna turn it, I turn it off, now we'll turn it back on. If it's lit up blue, it's on. You can choose heat pump, which it, what it does is reverses the cycle on the roof air and instead of creating air conditioning, it creates heat. Now, that's not enough heat to, uh, if it's 30 outside to make it 70 in here, that's just enough to kind of maintain, you know, if the coach was, if it was 60 outside, you might maintain 70 inside. Um, you've got aqua hot. Uh, again, what that's gonna do is take hot water and turn it into hot air. So, um, and you can also do auto, where it's kind of like a home thermostat. You just set it on, if you want to maintain 70, it's going to choose if it needs air conditioning or if it needs heat. Um, you got front, you got mid. So mid is on, the screen wasn't big enough, so they had to split up. Front and rear are on one screen. And then mid, you notice they're all blue. So I got the front set on 72. This one's on 72. Uh, the rear, 72. The mid, 72. Um, so um, the vent fan. So you can press the button on the bottom and there's a vent fan in your bathroom. Um, sometimes there's one, I don't see one in the kitchen of this one. So basically I think you've got one in your, um, your actual toilet area and then one in your, um, in, the, in the bathroom there. So we'll go on down to Wi-Fi extender. So um, you can turn that on. Basically what that's going to do is if you have Wi-Fi in a general area, sometimes at a big park or a big stadium or something, they've got Wi-Fi, this will take and, um, and help boost that to get you a good signal. Pop-up TV, so there is a remote over here, but you can press that up or down, and essentially that's gonna raise the uh, TV up and down out of the uh, cabinet up here. Um, slot out, so extend and retract. This will not work if the coach is running. It'll have a little lock on the screen that will not let you touch it. Um, basically, extend and retract, it's real simple. As you watch, you know, when you're extending, like I'm sitting here, let's say, holding my hand on the a Living Extend EXT, it's gonna run out and you'll hear it, and it, that means it's done. So you can keep pressing it, but if you notice that the seal up here is kind of butted up, it's finished. So just, um, just let it set there, and then uh, again, you got the bedroom, the closet, so if it is a quad slide coach, and you can only run one slide out at a time. Um, awning extend and retract, so real simple. It also has a remote. So on the remote, if you were outside, you would press the up button one time. You'll watch the awning come out. Never open the awning with high winds. They do have wind sensors on them, but it's like anything electronic. If that thing fails and you get a good gust of wind, um, I'm not talking about a two mile an hour wind. I'm talking about a 12, 15 mile an hour gust. It will fold that thing like a paper clip. So uh, we do replace them occasionally. Uh, it is covered by your insurance, but still it's a pain in the rear. So don't ever open it in high wind. It does have a wind sensor, but again, if it fails and it's windy, then uh, it will damage it. Uh, you can also extend and retract the awning. One thing I, I'll touch base on here, I like that Renegade offers two ways to do everything. So if this guy ever failed, you can go to the wall and there's buttons in various locations that turn stuff on. So I big kudos to them on that. I really like that. Um, basically, for keys, um, you can run the shades up and down. It has a day uh, shade just to block out the sunlight there. Um, this uh, coach does have the clear coated cabinets in it, so I love the finish on that. Um, spin around here, Mr. Jim. I'm going to show them this. The, this floor is a porcelain tile and it's heated. So um, you can turn this on and you can essentially set the floor temp. Now, during the winter, having a like 80 degree ambient temperature on the floor, you will feel it throughout the whole coach. Heat rises with, with the old, um, you know, science that you learned a long time ago. It's true. You heat this floor up, it will heat the whole coach up. So super cool uh, deal there. Um, we're going to go this way. So we'll start. Uh, you've got a two-door stainless fridge on the top, freezer on the bottom. Uh, basically, you pop the little latch and you open it up. Um, if someone comes over and they're new to your coach and they're tugging on the door and they say, hey, the door don't, won't open, 
They probably didn't know that was there. I've seen people break these off. Super cool idea um, to have going down the road, but you wanna make sure that is locked going because essentially you go around a turn real hard or you have to shift, that won't come loose. There's also one on this side, okay? I'm locking them right now, um, but you would wanna unlock them um, to, to uh, access them. So unlock, I always on the freezers, pull up on the handle, kind of reach your hand around here, give it a little help. Um, sometimes these seals get a little sticky or they're cold. Um, so you can tug on the handle, but a little just reaching your hand around and pulling um, kind of goes the extra mile there. So when you're done, uh, you don't have to lock that every time, but if you were fixing this to go down the road, lock it back. Um, this does convert to a bed, so there's a little latch under there. Um, essentially, you pull it out, and he slides down. The table sets on these little runners, and then um, you would put the cushions in there, and it makes a bed. Um, under here, you do have storage, and over here is more storage. Uh, there is a, a little runner rug that you can put in the middle uh, once you get where you're going. Uh, flex steel furniture. I mentioned that to a couple of you that have recently called. Flex steel uh, no longer makes furniture for the RV industry that I know of. Um, some of the best stuff we ever seen made. We were really sad to see them go or to go strictly to the home market, but uh, times are changing in this industry and um, the Flex Steel thought it was best to go to the home market. They had enough business there. They just really couldn't keep up with the RV side. So this coach was probably one of the last ones to get their stuff. Um, this does turn into like a hide of bed. So uh, essentially you take the cushions off and you grab the handle under here, it's gonna fold out and makes a bed. Um, something, again, you'll notice that um, is really cool. They put built-in USB ports, so you don't have to carry the charging block and just plug right in. You've also got a 110. Um, the shades, so the, the night shades, which are the white ones, are electronic, and the controller for them is over here in the controller drawer. Uh, it says MCD, okay? So to raise them, you would press the button up. Now, the way it's set right now, I, I ran them down earlier, it's on all. So pressing the button raises this shade and the three on this side. Okay, so I'm just gonna barely go you up. You'll watch them, here they come. Okay, you could press the middle to stop them or you can go down and they're all gonna go down. Now, there's a way that you can go to each channel if you wanted to raise this shade, but wanted that one closed, you can play around with this and you can do one shade at a time. So um, we'll go down and one thing uh, that you'll see, sometimes they'll get caught on those little knobs, you just gotta kinda come over and pull him down. Uh, kinda same with this guy here. So um, this is for your awning. Basically you just go outside. Um, the awning is 120 volts, so um, you either want um, the, uh, the inverter taking the 12 volt battery power and making 120, or shore power or generator on for this guy to work. He won't work strictly off of 12 volts. You have to have a 120 feet of some sort to make the awning come out. So we got the awning remote um, up and down on this one. So this is for the TV. Uh, essentially you press up and the TV starts coming up out of the cabinet. It'll come all the way up to it stops. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and run it back down, but that's for the TV. Um, again, more controller stuff. You just kind of got to get in and familiarize yourself with, but there should be a controller for everything in here. Uh, there's a dish controller, which goes with the dish setup. Uh, there's a DVD player in here. So all that is in here. There's some information um, on the D or on the uh, dish network system. Um, there is in here, um, there is manuals and something that we love getting with a coach. Um, some people keep them when they sell their coach and we never understand why, but this one did come with it. Uh, it's got your factory paint codes uh, with the company that painted the coach. Uh, it's got all little manuals. I mean, it goes from your components, where every, every serial number to your appliances, everything, unless it's been changed since new, is right here, okay? Production number, model, the whole bit. Um, you do have... Um storage you can see it along the top again you've got controls um, you can lift the TV up and down uh, you can turn the lights off from here you can turn individual lights off from there uh, you've got a lot of storage throughout the coach uh, coming around here you've got storage some spare fuses that's a little Freightliner kit again typical stuff that you're gonna want to have uh, for running down the road 
um, in here. You have the control for the front floor heat. So that control that we showed you earlier is for the rear. This is for the front. Um, up here is the magnum energy. So this is uh, pulling, um, pretty sure this is for your inverter. So turn it on. If you didn't have the generator running, you could take the 12 volt battery bank and turn it into 120. So that's just a little controller there. And again, you can also control that from the computer screen back there. So they've got, if that one failed, you've still got another way to do it. Automatic leveling. So you would want the key on, turn the power on, you get an auto level, all retract, or you could go up and down individually. Um, these things are very smart on how they're set up. It's got an electronic level, essentially. Um, actually, what it has is a memory at the factory. They leveled the coach perfectly and saved it as a memory. So the coach knows if it goes back to that spot, it's level. Um, so you turn the power on, hit auto level, put your little rubber pads out, jacks go down, it raises the coach up, perfectly level. If you're not level and you're taking a shower, all of the water, unlike a house, hopefully, is running to one side of the shower. So always level up there, you know. If you're on pretty level ground, get out and just give the coach a good eye. If you're on level ground, don't worry about it. Um, up here, uh, you have your satellite system on and off. You're gonna have a wire up here that says satellite in. So that's where you would, you're getting a satellite signal from your dome. You would plug into a direct TV box or you can plug in, there's actually already one a dish network included down there. Um, other than that, just a storage up here. Your TV, remember, is in that cabinet. You press the button, it lifts up. Um, you got storage down here. Uh, this looks like maybe some um, some guards for the sunlight to put up in the coach if you want uh, when you get parked. Um, over here, another safety. So um, this is a dish drawer, and if you load this thing down, or not dish drawer, it's a, um, like for your forks and knives and your utensils, if you load that guy down, it's heavy and going around a turn this will come out so it's actually double um you've got double row and you can imagine putting that many forks or knives or whatever in it it's very heavy so we put a safety in kind of like the fridge has just lock it but again show whoever you're with because they go to tugging it's not going to open unless that is opened up um, it does have an induction cooktop that's a two burner um, basically any pot pan you can find that'll work with an induction system will work with this. Um, it does have the Samsung uh, microwave slash convection oven so you can actually bake in this thing. You can bake a cake um, if you wanted to but nice, very clean, very neat, all stainless, matches the fridge. We love it. Um, over here you got your sink. Um, nothing special, just a big stainless single sink with um, your faucet here. Um, let's see, breaker panel. So, uh, if you ever have a light that's not coming on, um, there's a few fuses down by the battery. There's a little black box with yellow tabs on it that's got like four fuses. Um, check those, and it's labeled when you open it up what it is, but um, basically check these. If it's lit up green, it's being used, but you can press these in. Uh, the marine industry has used stuff like this for years. The RV industry finally got on board. Very simplex, very easy, resettable breakers. So instead of a fuse blowing and then you have to go find a fuse, all you have to do is reset it. Um, this is a pantry. Again, another super cool little latch system. Pull this guy out. You can put spices, different stuff, that you, just like you would have in your house. Um, down here on the bottom, is your 120. So one of these is a panel that's the inverter panel. What I mean is um, the inverter that's taking 12 volt battery uh, voltage and turning it into 120 is powering up, I think, the lower panel. So uh, yeah, this primary inverter. So one of these panels is being powered by that. One of them is being powered by just your general power coming from your generator or your shore power cord. But again, simple breakers, just like you would have in a house. All of them are labeled. If you have an outlet that's not working, it could be a ground fault um, push button on the receptacle itself, or it could be something in here that needs to reset. Um, moving on back here, bathroom, not really anything to touch on, lots of storage. Um, something that I discussed with Jim earlier, we were talking about is the door was a little loose, so we adjusted the latch, and trust me, in the RV industry, you're always gonna be chasing something that's loosening up. You gotta imagine this is like a house going down the road shaking. They do, and 
excellent job. I was not complaining. I'm just saying that um, maintenance is key on these things. And if you see something loose, tighten it up, and then you won't hear it uh, rattling going in the road. So when you close the door, you close it. Okay, that didn't close. Give it a little push. You'll hear it click. Now the door's closed. And what that does, there's rubbers on the door, and it keeps the door from doing this going down the road and, and sounding like stuff chattering. So the more like stuff like that you can keep tight, the less you're gonna hear it sitting back here or in the cab. Um, again, on the little panel here, you've got fan. You can turn this fan on that's right here. You can suck um, air in, air out. Um, you can run the slide out. So again, if the main little computer deal ever failed, you can run it all right here. Um, the bathroom in this coach, I'll let Mr. Jim come on around. It's very nice and clean. Um, there is a latch on the shower, so take note, if that's up, it will move. When you're traveling, you want that down, okay? And that's just, again, keeps this thing from shattering going down the road. So, uh, love the showers they put in, um, just super, super nice and clean and, and big. I mean, I'm six foot three, and when I step in here, I feel similar to a home shower. It doesn't feel, I'm not having to do this, I can wash and do my thing, and, um, and not feel super cramped. So nice size shower, doesn't take up a lot of room in the coach. Um, it is the macerator style toilet. So um, basically when you uh, do your business, you're going to press this and you will hear water uh, fill up the bowl and then it will actually suck it out, grind it up and put it in the tank. So um, you can do a basic flush, which is uh, very little water, or you can do a big flush where it's gonna put a lot of water You'll see it build up water and then it's going to um, suck it out. There you go. So um, it actually will do it a couple of times. Um, you want to use a toilet paper that's very thin. Again, um, it, they call it RV toilet paper. Not the most comfortable, but definitely dissolves quicker and will make life easier when you're dumping uh, and using your little macerator uh, grind around there. So um, in here, similar deal controls it controls all the lights um, speed up and down and for your vent so you're going to want to turn that on if you're taking a shower it's going to pull all the steam up and and ride out this is not electronic you do have to do it by hand it's got a, a day one um, which is uh, kind of like a tinted and then you've got the night one uh, that's solid so all right all right so back here again I'm gonna give the door a little push, you hear him close. Uh, master bedroom, so you got the remote for the TV is over by the bed. Um, underneath the bed is your fresh water tank, so there is no storage under the bed, it's your tank. You've got lighting, you've got controls up above your head, uh, ways to turn stuff on and off. Uh, you do have a washer and dryer uh, right here. Uh, dryer is on top and washing machine is on bottom. Uh, make sure your water pump's on put your detergent in. You can read the manuals. It is Splendid brand, which is a, um, a brand that's in a lot of marine and RV um, RVs. So over here, there's if something doesn't open, there's always a latch. So keep that in mind. There's a little kind of quarter turn, pulling back, very nice size safe in this one. So you got the keys, the manuals there where you can program it, but you've got a safe to put your belongings in. Um, the, it's a cedar lined closet and you can smell it. I mean, even with a coach being a, a year old or so here, you can you can definitely smell it. I love that about these, the cedar line, but you can hang your stuff, got your safe, and this opens from either end. So when you close him, close him all the way, quarter turn, okay? Same way with this one, quarter turn up, and there you have it. Um, over here, you've got um, more storage all throughout. Uh, they are all soft door or soft closed drawers, so no real way to slam it. You shut it and it just kind of closes itself. Um, TV, uh, your entertainment stuff, DVD player. Uh, you can put another direct TV box back here if you wanted to. Lots of cabinet skies in this one. Um, they have little built-in lights, so when you open the cabinet, you've got lights. Always make sure before you leave that these are closed. You'll kind of feel them sometimes like click in that extra notch and it just keeps things from swinging open and banging. Um, going down the road. Um, I know it's a long video, but I wanted to really show you uh, if you purchase this coach kind of what you're getting. Um, and I think this will really help you, um, you know, uh, be able to use it quickly and, and not have to wonder or have a lot of questions. So let's roll up to the front to the cab there. And um, I will show you uh, essentially firing up the coach and a few things about that. 
one thing Jim just pointed out is the pocket doors. So a little different in this coach, they are magnetic. Some of them have the strikers that shoot through the floor, not in this one. So uh, they're magnetic. You're gonna, you can actually, I'm naturally I grab them like that. It's made to do this. You put your hand in that, you push up, put your finger, pull, but it's got magnets. And this thing has to have four or five magnets on the back side. So uh, you pull this out and then you can take and twist and close the knob to lock it if you want from either side. But when you go back, watch it. It's got a magnet on the back side of it. So you got one there. You can block off the master or if you were doing your business or wanted some privacy in the bathroom, you can also close off this one. So this is sort of what they call a mid-bath unit, but I love the pocket doors. It keeps a door from uh, having to swing, but I like the magnetic because so many times I've picked up a coach and forgot to shoot the striker through the floor. And you're driving down the road, you're about two minutes into the strip, you go around a turn and you just hear this thing smoking the other side of the wall. Horrible feeling, you're thinking you've done broke something. With this, I love it. That's someone using their head on the magnetic system. So um, let's go up here and I'll show you the driver's seat. So we touched base on the keys. Um, you have uh, entry lock, entry unlock, which is this side, cargo lock, cargo unlock, okay? Um, there's this key here, uh, goes to the ignition, and you turn him on. You'll hear that buzzing, so that's the sound you're gonna hear, uh, hear if you're too close to a car. It's kind of like a real loud hum. So I've got the uh, coach started up. Um, our def fluid is full, uh, diesel uh, tank showing half. You've got axle temps over here, oil temperature, oil pressure, water temp. Again, when these gauges are in the red is when you should be concerned. Uh, this is a new enough truck, you shouldn't have any issues, but again, it is all mechanical, so keep an eye on your stuff. Um, to put it in gear, basically, um, you wanna wait, let the engine start, make sure your your airs, which is your air pressure, are both in the green. Press the yellow valve. You won't use the red valve unless you're towing a trailer that has air ride or air brakes, so you won't do anything with that one. You'll push this one in, so give it just a firm push. You got your foot on the brake at this point, go over here and hit drive, okay? And right now the coach is in first gear. It is a six speed and it'll show you on this monitor what gear. So uh, again, neutral, when you come to a stop, come to a complete stop, hit neutral, pull that, and you're there. Uh, you've got your controls for your air conditioning. Um, it's uh, got where you can lower the air suspension, so if you were um, at a, a track or at a, an event and you were wanting to squat the rear of the truck to raise the back of the trailer up, you can press that. Um, it does have differential lock, which basically locks both wheels together so that one wheel doesn't spin if you were in mud or something. Um, and uh, you've got trailer brakes again you won't use that unless you've got an air brake trailer so uh, stuff in here you'll just kind of have to get in and, and piddle with to uh, fully understand it but the engine brake you do have high low um, and what that does is when you hit the brakes and you hear a semi kind of that's it's using the compression of the engine to slow you down so helps conserve the brakes excellent idea um, you've got footwell lights, which turns on a little light down to the bottom. Um, you've got, uh, you can brighten and dim the lights on the dash. Lane searching. So this thing is going to help keep you in the middle of the lane. If you get too far over, even if someone's not next to you, it's going to uh, buzz and scream at you. You can turn that off. Um, again, if you're new to driving one of these, it's probably not a bad idea to leave it on, but you can turn it off. So. Uh, to set your cruise, you go over here, you got on, and you got uh, set, excel, uh, resume, all that's here, and cancel, and it also should cancel when you hit your brakes. Um, your windshield wiper controls are on the left side over here, you can turn them on. We did replace the blades, so they are brand new, and the windshield wiper fluid is full. Uh, high and low beam, just like a car, pull it back. Uh, you got windows, door locks, mirror adjustment over here. Um, so all that is uh, works perfect and uh, is ready to use. Uh, CB radio overhead, if you're into the channel, 19 is what you would want to go to, and that's your truck drivers talking. It might save you a speeding ticket or alert you that um, 
there's uh, you know some a wreck or something so many miles up so that's all i have uh thanks for watching i appreciate you tuning in i know it was kind of long-winded but i wanted uh you to fully understand what we've got here and uh, my name is dylan thompson chase motorsports coach and trailer sales we buy we sell we trade um, we are easy to get a hold of. You can reach me on my cell phone, 270-556-8461. Check us out online at race-haulers.com. Uh, Facebook is real popular, Chase Motorsports Coach and Trailer Sales. Uh, we're located at 12, 12 Brown Street in Paducah, and uh, we're open six days a week. So give me a call if I can help you. Again, thanks for watching.